without further ado, Miss, oh, I'm sorry, Dr. Nola Jones from Con Selma. No one like New Orleans. You can have 
your foot squarely up their butt 24 hours a day if at the end of the day you look, they know you love them and they know you're not going to leave them. Because what happens is the adults and children who live in these stressed environments, they don't have adults they can depend on. You're it, folks. You're it. And you're the person who's with them year after year after year, where they have an English teacher for one year, you're in from sixth grade on. That's the good news. Here's what we know. They rely on their peers. That's why they go to games, because they don't have adults. They have peers. They live in chaotic households. Sometimes their parents are unresponsive for different reasons. If mom's working three jobs to pay the rent, or paid a light bill, she doesn't have time to be responsive. And they're coming to school with a, over a million dollars, a million words less vocabulary than their peers. No one has sung to them. No one has read to them. And guess what? If they don't read on grade level by third grade, all the data show that they will not. Here's the good news. If you can teach them to read music, the cognitive process of reading music is the same as reading words. And so they can transfer and they can learn. And this is their gateway drugs, <coughs> drug, but the gateway into something that will make them better. And that college-bound piece is everything. And they're getting scholarships. They don't have to be music majors. If you can put a bassoon together, you can get a college scholarship. If you can get it back in the case without tearing it up, there's more money for you. <laughs> right? So, so this is what we know. But this is what scares me. The cognitive lacks. If they're coming out of these stressful environments and we don't give them a home and we don't give them a family and we don't give them a tribe, they're, this part of their brain the, the cerebral cortex where their executive function and their decision making process will be impaired and it will never develop. And that's why they can't make good choices because they haven't been given the chance to do so. And so if they're, and health and safety, if they're not fed right. So I had a friend, Isla Nicholson, who used to teach in Jackson, Mississippi, and she taught in a school where kids drove BMWs and Mercedes to school every day, you know. And so when she moved to Nashville, she said, I want to teach. I've still got some tread left on my tires. My husband's an executive at Kirkland, so I don't need the money, but I want to teach. And I said, Isla, the only school I have open right now is a school that's John Early Magnet School. They haven't had a band in four years, and it's fed by two housing projects and a homeless shelter. And she said, I'll take it. She didn't take a breath. And at the December concert, when they had not had band in four years, every single child had a parent represented or a family person represented at that concert. Every single one. We don't have that anywhere in our school system. Can you imagine? I said, how did you get them to do that? She said, I wrote it on their hands in Sharpie. I said, don't tell me that. <laughs> but she got them there. And then, and then she had a, she figured out, now I don't know why you give any band director bus duty every Monday morning, but they guess she had it every Monday morning because she was the new kid on the block. And she would go in and she'd realize that on Monday morning she's writing twice as many referrals for, for kids on Monday mornings as she is on, on any other day of the week. And instead of saying, God, these kids are terrible. I hate this. I, what is, she started figuring out what was wrong and why they were doing it. Y'all, they were coming back to school hungry. They left school on Friday. They didn't have a good meal between Friday and Monday morning. They get on the bus. It's cold. It's dark outside. Somebody says something cranky to them. And the next thing you know, they're duking it out in the parking lot. So she went to Walmart, got a bunch of black backpacks. She went to the food bank and put a bunch of black food and black backpacks in the instrument room so they could just pick up a black backpack and walk out. Nobody ever has to know they have it. They bring it back on Monday empty, and when they come back on Friday, it's full again. And so can you imagine what kind of love, like teaching the music part of it, that'll take care of itself. She had all state kids in two years, but they don't care how much you know until they know how much you can. Another little kid, not, not a bad kid, came out of the cafeteria one day with these big cargo shorts on that you know they can't wear and you know why they can't wear them. And she said, you know, you gotta go change your shorts. And he hung his hand and he said, I know, I told my mother I couldn't wear those today. Didn't argue with her because she was so sweet about it. She didn't embarrass him. She put her arm around him. She whispered in his ear. She didn't call him out in front of his
his friends. And he said, Mama didn't have enough money to go to a Washeteria this weekend, and this was all I had. Chapter. So she started thinking about, well, what can I do about that? So no kids should be embarrassed, whether they're in band or not. Why should any kid have to be embarrassed like that? So she started staying after school on Friday, and she would bring the tide, and they would stay, and they would wash their clothes after school on Friday. She would stay with them. And the only caveat was they had to play an instrument, and they had to practice while they were there with her, and she'd give them a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> and they would peer tutor, and, they, and it turned into be a really big deal. And she finally had to tell them, look, if your mom can wash, or if you have a washer and dryer, you don't get to bring your clothes. <laughs>
the point I'm trying to make is he's a very, very successful businessman. He owns Steinway and Constantine for a reason because he's committed to the company. Um, the history is that Selmer, UMI, which was United Musical Instruments, and Lamont all became part of Constantine. They, they acquired these smaller instrument companies over the years. And Consumer is the last American music maker of instruments, and they're dedicated to music education. If you go to Bands of American Grand Nationals, or you go to Battle of the Bands, or you go to Drum Corps International World Championships, you're not going to see our logo on the 50 <coughs> because that's not where we're investing our money. We're investing our money into what you do into music education in the United States. The other companies that are our competitors are not owned by an American citizen who has an investment in public education in the United States. Other instruments are made in Taiwan, they're put on a shipping container and they're shipped over here and they're sold <coughs> to us and, it, and they don't have an investment into our what we're trying to do in terms of American public education. Our company believes if we don't grow the next generation of music consumers, who's going to be the next, who will be the next famous musician, but more importantly, who will be the person who knows tolerance and empathy and love and artistic expression and all and culture and respect, all the things that we teach. Um, if I go back to your classroom and ask every person that came out of your man out of the marching 100 for the last 20 years, the one word they're going to use is family. And they're going to find family somewhere. If it's not family in tribe, in a school, in a band program, then it's going to be somewhere else that's a lot less positive. And I firmly believe it's much less expensive and much more productive to educate and grow human beings that are loving and kind than it is to incarcerate people who are hopeless. And band gives people hope. It gives children hope. So the brand industry, I can, the history, can, y'all can look on the website and read that, right? Y'all don't need to explain. It's just a series of how we got to where we are today. And it's really kind of cool. But I think the more important thing is to get to the concept of what the division of education is. We have three factories. We, one is in Elkhart, Indiana. That's a Bach plant. How many of you play on a Bach stride or you play Bach strides? They're the flagship. You know this. They're, it's like that's the instrument that we're known for. The East Lake, Ohio company makes the, the king in the, the march, most of the marching grass the mellophones, the marching baritones, the instruments, the, a lot of the pieces and parts for the different instruments are made over there and then shipped to the Bach plant where they assemble those. But it's not just stamped out. These are the <coughs> things. A Bach Strad trumpet is touched over 300 times by a different individual. So it's a work of art and they're not just rubber stamped and stamped out. And if you've ever had a chance to tour the Bach plant, I would strongly encourage you to do that. But what I'd really like to do is get some of you up there for our Con Summer VIP days um, and let you come see that in, in, in live and in living color. In the road of North Carolina is we make all, where we make all of our lovely percussion equipment. So that's where, if, and if, if you know much about Muster and Ludwig, you, or how many percussionists? Yeah. So the Ludwig percussionists, our, our percussion equipment, I, if you took the, the shells of the heads off the top and you look at the way the shells are made, there's a reason our instruments last longer. If you bid out the instruments, I, 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 I'm $10 million from the National over the last 10 years, and what I can tell you, pretty much across the board, there's going to be one brand that's going to come in about 30% cheaper than ours, and there's going to be another brand that's going to come in about 30% <coughs> more than ours probably know who they are um, but what I can tell you is that after five years of doing that the repair for the brand that's coming in at 30 percent less in my school district with my bands which are like your bands we were offsetting the cost of that in spades with repair and by the way when they're being repaired they're not in your kids hands 
So the quality of the instruments, I think, speaks to itself. And I would invite you, if you're looking at a bid and you really want to see those instruments, I'll get a, I'll get a sample sent in to the music store so that you can compare those two mellophones and, and put them on a strobe and let them see what the tune is, how in tune they are. Let them see the sound that they generate because the sound that you want to create is different. And, and, it, and to your point, talking about the quality of the sound and having that characteristic sound is what we want. If you play in tune and in tone, it's going to be louder. It, it doesn't have to be as loud if it's in tune and in tone. We know this. Which is probably why that band you were talking about, you know, was able to be so well thought of. So here's our division of education and how this works. We have educational support managers. This, this is me, I'm yours. And you can get me for free. Like I'll come down, I'll chase your third clarinets, I'll rehearse your concert band, I'll do whatever you need, I'll talk to your boosters, I'll do whatever I can do that you think would be helpful to you where your program is concerned. If you want to do a professional development for your school district or your city, I can come down and do that. And Consumer will support that. You wouldn't have to pay for it, depending on if we can get enough, um, like today, to be in here to be with you all. They're, you know, they're paying for all that. Because they're, again, you're not going to see our banner on the 50-yard line. We don't advertise like that. This is where we spend our money, is to help our people. So you're now part of the Consumer family, whether you want to be or not. <laughs> and we want to be there if you need us. We're not going to get up all up in your grill and get in your business. But if you call or you email or you text me, I, I, I think that, that you'll find out that I'll respond. Um, have any of you ever been to any of Dr. Tim Lotzenhauser's leadership sessions? Yeah, he's fantastic. And if you have the chance to do that, that's something you really want to do. And I would love to figure out a way maybe to get him down here next year to do a session for you all if we possibly could. Because from a leadership standpoint, it's life changing. And then we have our educational, these are the people who support this work. And then we have our educational consultants. And, and O'Neill is not on paper an educational consultant, but he is one of our educational consultants. He does a lot of work for us, and we consider him to be one of our partners. So, and you'll see my little area is down in the southeast. That's my people. This, you can tell that I grew up in Mississippi. I, I have two degrees from Mississippi and one from South Carolina. I, I grew up there, so that's my people. My sister teaches in New Orleans. She sings and goes back and forth between there and Berkeley. This is our area. So that's why I wanted to be here. Um, you don't have to know, know about me. He read you enough more than you wanted to know. So all the things that we offer have to do with what you all have said you needed over the years. So professional development, inventory management, we need instruments, generating funds. So in the summer, we do a thing called the Constelmer Institute. It's June the 9th through the 12th this year. Um, I don't know, have any of you ever been up for that? Was it, did you, did you find it worthwhile? Yeah. So we would really love to invite, and we have a great collegiate track for that. Um, it's really inexpensive when you consider, I think the registration is $1.99, and then another 30 bucks a day gets your meals and your housing. You can't stay at home for that, you know. Plus you get to be with a bunch of band directors and a bunch of people. Um, that do just what you do every single day. So we do those con the Consumer Institute, and it's outside, it's in Elk Park, right outside Elk Park in here. Um, we're also doing a marching band workshop that's going to connect to that the two days after that this year. And this is a new thing that we're doing for the first time. We have educational clinicians. So let me tell you how this works. If you buy instruments from Conselmer, one of the things we're going to do, how our first work is, Conselmer does not sell instruments to you. We're going to go through your music store. The first thing I'm going to do when you call me, Wendell, and say, I'm looking for a new battery percussion, I'm going to say, who's your music store of choice? And then we're going to go through that music store. So let's be real clear about that. But what I will do is write a proposal for you that will 
tell you what the best school bid price is for those instruments, and it's good. And then, in that proposal, it's going to tell you what your concept or educational benefits are going to be. So we're going to give you roughly 1% back of everything that you purchase to be used in the form of bringing in these educational clinicians. So you could bring in an Alfred Watkins to work with your band, or you could bring in a Johnny Lee Lane, or you could bring in a, a, an Aaron Cole, or whoever that, that, that would be as part of that educational give back. And again, that's instead of putting a banner on a 50 yard line. We feel like that work is more important. And Or if you wanted to use that money, I want to take that money and go to the Consumer Institute next summer and get some continuing ed credit and be up there and get my batteries recharged for four days with cool people. If you're not happy in your job, there's a job fair there too. You probably find another job. <laughs> But before you do that, call me. If you're going to move, you call me first because I'd like to get you to Nashville because we're, I, I'm not saying that out loud. I'm not recruiting you to leave. But, but I am saying if you know you're looking, call me. So, so these are some of the people. These are just some of the people. If you go to the DOE website, there's, there's tons of people, all kinds of different genres, all kinds of different people, and you can educate them, access these educational clinicians. If it's an honor band in your area, um, a lot of times Consumer will just go ahead and, and support that even though you may not have purchased instruments there it, because it's a district-wide thing. It's not just your one school. So you get educational credits for your one school, but also we want to support your district efforts too. And so depending on how things are going and with that person, we can certainly help make that happen. This Consumer Education website, if you go to education.consumer.com, and even if you can't remember that, just go to consumer.com and then click on the education link, and it'll connect you to all that. Here's something that we have that we're really proud of is our inventory platform. And this is the <coughs> it's the price is not bad, it's free. So if you're, if you're looking at in terms of your district inventory and you want to know where we are with that, this program, you send me a, a, a sheet of your in inventory and we'll dump it into our system and I'll send it back to you. And it creates the coolest bar graphs and pie charts that'll say, gee, in three years, 80% of our metal phones are going to be over 15 years old. What's our plan for how we're going to replace those now. Like you know if you buy a Con 20K, it's a thing, it's gonna last forever. You know, it's like a Mercedes diesel that your grandmother drove that had 300,000 miles on it. But it's still still going, right? Um, and by the way, they've redone the ones, the constant, and they've got the heavy duty braces now that are pretty spectacular. If you haven't seen our new timpani, they're amazing. If anybody's looking for a new timpani, the wheels on them were made by a robotics person and they'll spin 360 degrees. So you don't have to do that timpani waddle that we've all done <laughs> to try to get them. <laughs> I see you scratching your head. Yeah, and the wheels <coughs> pop right off the little bowl so you can get them through the door. And how many times have we just like about ready to kill ourselves and how many timpani heads have we ruined trying to get them into, a, spin a, into an auditorium? But this inventory piece is beautiful. Um, it doesn't have to be con or instruments. We'll take all of your instruments. It's only as good as the information that you put in it. And you're going to you're going to look at the quality of the instruments, and you're going to indicate this. Unrepairable means exactly what it says. It's not worth the cost of repairing it. Poor condition. It's not functional, but we can get it back into into condition. Good condition means scratches and dents, but still works fine. Excellent condition means pretty much fingerprints only. So when you take that bar chart in there, or that pie chart in there, and you show your administration, do you see that 80% of our instruments are in poor or under repairable condition? What is our plan for how we're going to fix this? Because what's going to happen is we're going to look up at four years, and that 80% is going to be 100%. And what is our plan for how we're going to fix this? <coughs> It's a lot easier to get $100,000 a year for 10 years or $50,000 a year for 10 years than it is to come in there and ask for a million dollars. They think you've lost your mind. 
But if you come in there and you're looking long term, and especially if you have a great feeder program, finally you've gotten a good junior high person that's feeding you, and you know that you've only got six Zeus phones, but you've got four two players coming up. Are you going to just walk in there next year and say, I need $25,000 worth of tubas? Or are you going to come to them a year, two years in advance and say, looking at these numbers, I'm projecting that we're going to need these. How about we buy two a year to make a plan for how that's going to happen? The other thing that we have is a great financing program that if you can't, and I did this at MLK at my school in Nashville when I was trying to build a program. It's chicken or egg. If you don't have the instruments, you can't get the kids. If you don't have the kids, you can't get the instrument. So which comes first? The beautiful thing is I can do my inventory very easily. I go, yeah, the very Saxons here, yeah, the Tubas here, yeah, the French horns here, we're good. You know, but that was the bad news. We needed a lot more instruments than that. So we did a five-year uh, financing plan. And yes, you do pay more for them. You can't pay the same thing for a car if you don't finance it. But you also know that the cost of that car is going to go up about 3% a year every year. And for those five years of those kids that don't have access to those instruments, what kind of service are we doing for them? So if you came to me and said, I want to spend about $25,000 a year on instruments, and we can get to a five-year commitment, then we can get a lot of instruments in there overnight that you can be using over the next five years. And our instruments last long. So here's what the National Association of Music Merchants says. If an instrument is taken care of, the lifespan should be. And this is not a consumer data, by the way. This comes from the National Association of Music Merchants, and it deals with all the brands, not just consumer. But school systems also, if you look on the right side, they depreciate instruments the same way they depreciate buses. You know how your car, when you buy a new car and you drive it off the lot, it immediately is not as worth as much as you just wrote the check. It's not even drive the check. Because they depreciate over a 10-year period. If you have, um, God forbid, you've ever been upside down in a car wreck and you owe more than they said the car was worth. You, but we know people that have had that happen. So they, districts understand that they depreciate instruments out and at the end of 10 years, then you need to be talking about replacing them. And they're used to talking in those terms because that's the, how they deal with their buses, that's how they deal with their HVAC units, that's how they deal with big expenditures in the district. So when they say, oh, well, we're gonna pay more if we finance it, the answer is yeah, and if we buy two tubes a year for the next five years, all those kids that didn't get those instruments in the five years, we graduated a whole graduating class that didn't have access to those instruments. And, and we've not served the need of those children, and we've not built a program. So that financing thing has worked out really well for some people. And I can talk you through that. I can write you a proposal that will tell you exactly an estimate, exact, an exact estimate <laughs> of what it would cost. And, you know, you can say, I've... What can we do for $25,000 a year? What can we do for $40,000 a year? What can we do? And we'll just get your wish list and we'll make it work. So, and, and again, O'Neill will be involved in this as much as you choose for him to be. You can start with him if you're more comfortable with going to him first, or you can come to me and I'll put him into the conversation. Um, but we're gonna go through your local music store. Consumer's not gonna sell you the instrument. I'm gonna ask you who you wanna deal with because it's really important that when you get these instruments in, you want to keep your money locally if possible. If it comes drop shipped in from, you know, fourth time zones away, they don't have a vested interest. And what we can do is write into your proposal that you want a local dealer who's going to come in. They're not going to drop ship those instruments straight to your school. They're going to come in. They're going to play test everything. They're going to set it up. They're going to set it up and make sure that it's working right. And if it's not working right, they're going to get it fixed to you or they're going to send it back and we're going to get new ones sent in. It's not just a situation where they get dropped in and good luck. So, and I can help you with that too. We have an online wish creator now that you can go on there. Go ahead. I, I, I don't think um, there's one other southern point, the thing that kind of got me on board is that I didn't heard you talk about the in kind of so technically, I got about $300,000 for about 
is sixty thousand dollars. So yes. the kind of sum is going to give you the what is it? The same match the dollar. Mm -hmm. Like if you spend a hundred thousand, they're going to wind up giving you two hundred thousand dollars worth of interest. So we don't really say it that way, but let me. But you're right. Remember when I said I'm going to give you the best school bid price for it? When you look in the book and you see MSRP, the price you're going to get from me, the quote you will get from me, is going to roughly be about half of that, depending on whether you finance or not. So that's what that educational partnership benefit is. And then you're going to get your educational partnership benefits for your artists or your CSI you know, uh, scholarship, whatever, on top of that. So, in essence, so I guess we could just go black and white, just raw, raw tax, right? I spend, I spend twenty-two thousand a year. I received eight Susan phones, fourteen marching euphonies, fourteen mellophones, eighteen trombones, twenty-four trumpets, uh, four tenor saxophones. Four alto saxophones, eight clarinets, and six flutes for twenty something thousand dollars a year, guys. Over five years. Over five, every every year, I'm going to pay twenty two thousand mm dollars, -hmm. and that that's the kind of inventory I just received. And the instruments are in his bedroom now. He's not waiting and buying twenty two thousand dollars worth of instruments every year. He's getting them in his bedroom now. That's what that financing is. Yeah, so so do this online wish creator. Do this online wish creator. Get an idea of how much you want to spend, whether it's 22, 25, 30, whatever it is, and then send me that online wish creator, and then I'm gonna call you, and we're gonna talk about it, and I'm gonna put this proposal together for you to go to your booster board, to go to your principals, to go to your whoever you work with, and we're gonna make this happen. One other thing that I would mention to you that our universities are doing really well, I'm working with Mississippi Valley State right now on a deal where their alumni are going to raise a certain amount of money and then they're going to go to the president of the university and say, look, we've raised this amount of money, we want you to match it times three. And it's matching funds and very few band booster like when your band boosters kick in and say, we're going to commit to $10,000 a year, but we want you to give us the other 30, they can't, it's free money, they can't turn that away. You wish your personal investments would pay off like that, right? I wish my bank account would pay off like that. So a lot of times when you get the parents involved, and we can talk you through that, like it's, this is all about relationships. This is about us getting to know you, you getting to know me, and let's figure it out get no nail in it, get, let's talk about what is it that they need so that we can help them survive and you don't need to be worried about this. You don't need to be worried about whether or not that kid comes hungry to your school. We need to get you to a point where you can teach music and culture and all those other things you're great at. And I'm absolutely running out of time and I'm down to my last two slides. So we also have a program now that we're not grant writers. But we have bought a, a membership onto a grant writing platform where if you're working on a program in, say, inner city New Orleans, there are a lot of people that are funding music in New Orleans right now and in your area. And it's just a hot button about, okay, who are the people who are funding in your area and how do I get you in contact with them? Because guess what? They're not putting it up on the billboards because they don't want every Tom, Dick, and Harry calling on them. Right? So we'll get, if you're interested in a certain part of, like you want to start a steel drum, and here's why, because you have a bunch of kids who moved in from the Dominican Republic and you feel like that would really resonate and get them in school, then that's why you want to do that. And by the way, kids in Nashville Public Schools and Metro Nashville come to school on average 11 days more a year if they're in music more than one year in high school. 11 days more a year. And I can send you that data. That's the, 10 days they're truant. So you're keeping them in school. Um, so we can connect you with grant writers in your area who you might not be able to get access to. We can't write your grants for you, but I might be able to tell you where to go and look for those. And then we want to hear from you. We want to know about your program highlights. That's 
why I make sure everyone who had my card. I'm really sorry if we don't have time for to spend the rest of the day together. I could spend the whole day talk, hearing from you and talking with you, and I'm getting the high sign now. I feel like I've already gone over. But it's just wonderful to get to be with you. I'm, again, you don't know me, but I am truly committed to the work that you're doing, and I, and I want to help you. And, and my teachers in Nashville, when I think about my little Will Brooks who came in and said, put me in your toughest school, I wouldn't be alive if it wasn't for my band director in Detroit. And I watched the fact that he's changed the whole culture of the Hunters Lane Band program. By the way, he brings it down to Monty Wright every year and does three college stops on the way and three going back. You know, so it's not just about coming down in the Monty Wright parade. It's the other stuff, too. That's, that's what you're doing. And you're fighting a good fight, and you deserve support. And you don't deserve equality. You deserve equity. Your kids deserve equity. And all means freaking all. So, there you have it. Did everybody get cards, brochures? Any questions before we have to? Uh, <coughs> yeah, any, any questions? I need a second brochure. Yeah. The big one? Yeah, we've yeah, we got, got one right now. Yeah, we've got plenty down here. And I'll leave, and I'll leave these two. And I'm really sorry that I can't stay with you the rest of the day. I'm getting on a plane tomorrow and I won't sleep in my own bed for three weeks. So it's not that I don't want to be here with you. Yeah, go <coughs> Just to get in touch with me and we'll talk about that. We have we don't we are we're pretty well full for the rest of the year, but we may be we may have some spots that we might be filling because we'd like to get you there. Yeah, please. Yes, yeah, so that's your financing through a financing company, not through Conselmer. So that is with you and them. But I mean, I think, yeah, there's an expectation that you have to, you'll have to go through um, being approved for that, and they're going to want to know that you've got the means to do that. Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. I saw a hand in the back. No. I know you're tired, and I know this is the time of year when we just start to feel beat, beat down. But please know you're you're making such a difference in kids' lives. You're you're not just changing lives; you're saving lives, and you're changing lives, and you're creating a whole generation of people that are going to change the wrongs that previous generations have done. And, and and I know it, and I see it every day. 